Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true dead. welcome back to Empire Total War. Well, last time, we made it here, to the gates of Paris, France attacked us, stupid bastards, we have beaten them back on every front, and now, it all comes down to this, an attack on their world capital, though... If you're unfamiliar with this game, prepare yourselves, because in this game, sieges were a little bit different to what you might be expecting. Now, you may be a bit surprised by what's in front of you, which is, you would not be wrong to suggest Paris was larger than this, because this is not Paris. In this game, you don't necessarily have to take the town itself. Paris, in fact, is over there in the distance. Instead, what we're taking on is an artillery fort on the outskirts of Paris, because if the enemy occupies the fort, we can't just march to Paris, because then there would be an enemy behind us in a fortified position. So if we could take the fort and kill everyone inside it, Paris falls to us by default. So basically these were like city sieges, but on a very small scale. They can be very intense. Most of my units, those that are professional soldiers, can climb the walls using little grappling hooks, which is very cute indeed. Just be aware the enemy have got free cannons built into the walls. They're not that powerful, they're not that accurate, but they are there. And on top of that, of course, the fort is kind of set up so there are multiple lines of fire. So people over here can be firing down over here, and from here they can be firing down over here, etc, etc. If you've got the numerical advantage, and I do, it's not a bad idea to be approaching from multiple angles, because of course, their best troops, and there are not that many good troops on this occasion, can only guard so many breaches, because cannons can knock down the walls. Not a bad idea at all. Simultaneously trying to push into a breach with your best troops, climbing the walls, knocking down a wall the far side, doing all these things at the same time, that is a good idea. So on this occasion, an approach from two angles. Most of the army coming from this direction, four units of decent line infantry in group one over there. And straight away we can see, interestingly, we've got, oh. Okay, we've got some guys coming under fire straight away. No reason to let that happen. Guys, back off a tiny bit. They've got, aha, that's their cannons. Gotcha, they've decided to set their cannons up outside, uh, so they can actually shoot at us with them. Honestly, fair enough, but uh, I've got cavalry, so good luck with that. Same deal over here as well, I see. I see the issue. Their cannons would be useless inside the fort, because uh, from here, they would have uh, no shot, and they can't be up on the walls, uh, so they deployed them outside. Makes sense, but uh, yes, this is uh, most of what we need to get by, and you can see here, these cannons are firing immediately. Yes, my cavalry can now go over here and cause some trouble. Meanwhile, we are just going to start knackering this situation. Alright, the walls are going to go down in the not too distant future. You guys just charge into that and uh, yeah, you can see that. The cannon shots off the walls are generally not going to do too much. I'm uh, happy just to wait for a breach before we start pushing forwards. And if we're lucky, we might even be able to, yes, trap some enemies up on the walls. They might be crossing over and fall down at the same time. If you're very lucky, that can be the case. So there we go. Breach number one is in play. Change target over to this wall, if you'd be so kind. We've already knackered one of their cannons. They are shattered. Change your target over to here. And fortunately, the enemy don't seem to be responding to, yes, my troops attacking their cannons yet. Now, they might be trying to send out the Lancers to intercept. That is entirely possible. These guys are wavering, broken, and now we should be able to... No, they're coming. They're coming, all right, guys. Back off. Let's get you guys right back. So, at this point, honestly, I think we'd be okay just saying, fire on these guys because more troops might be coming out. And you guys just... Keep on keeping on. Though my troops are probably better in a straight up melee. To be perfectly honest, I think we could probably have uh, lancers. So, alright, turn and engage. My troops are better in a straight up melee. So, 
Never mind, they've just decided to fire over there, which is a perfectly reasonable place to fire, to be honest. Hopefully, we can take down some of these troops with them. Lancers have a ridiculous charge bonus, but as soon as it wears off, they are annihilated. In fact, I am pretty happy with the first wave starting to move up at this point. So, yeah, we're just taking out wall the next. And there we go. We just killed a lot of troops right there. Good, 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 good. And in fact, some of them are not happy. Not happy at all because I just, you know, shot some of them to death. Which is just, oh, precisely the thing right there. I will say, these guys are doing better than I was expecting against my cavalry. But what can you do, eh? Right, the lancers are finally break. And now we can take out the other cannon, make sure he's shattered. Then my cavalry go round the outside, demolish the other cannons. Because at this point, yes, my troops should be able to pretty safely advance. There is a light cannon fire coming in. It's not a big deal. There we go, shattered. Right, so you guys just straight up there. Most of their troops now seem to be on this side. So, okay. Let's bring in the troops that are coming in right now. In fact, you know what? Two and two. You guys may now start advancing as well. Please start running. We can 100% take the walls while these guys are trying to hold the breaches. Now, interestingly, these guys appear to want to uh, do a bit of a suicide charge. Straight into uh, these gun lines. So, I mean, if they want to, guys, let them have it, to be honest. And here comes the firepower. And now you're all dead. Proper charge of the light brigade. Their mag flipping nificent. So they're pretty much uh, broken. Yep, shattered already. Keep on keeping on, lads. Keep on keeping on. How are you guys doing? Aha! Need to demolish these cannons before my infantry get close enough. That's going to be a problem. The French probably have canister shot. So we don't want any issues with that. You guys start running. So far, they've barely taken any damage at all. But I'm happy just to exchange fire with units inside here for the time being. Meanwhile, at the back, my cavalry have just managed to get on top of the enemy cannon. These guys are terrible, though. Oh, they might be sending some lancers to reinforce. Honestly, clever. These cavalry are a little bit isolated right now, so these guys are wavering. Okay, bare minimum. Even if these cavalry get mopped up by the lancers, we've managed to buy a moment's grace. These cannons, as soon as these guys have moved up, are basically useless. So, yeah, you guys uh, just move up. These guys uh, keep moving forward, please. Keep moving forward. I would like you to be able to fire on the troops inside uh, this area. Because right now you're being fired upon for no benefit. So just uh, move up and open fire on these guys, the firelock armed citizens. This side is definitely weaker. It must be said. So, honestly, guys... Oh, yep, there we go. Cavalry has been seen off, unfortunately. So the cavalry's gone, but that is a-okay. Guys, begin climbing the walls. Now we just begin approaching from every angle at once. Congrats, you're going in with your fancy new bayonet. So these guys are now just going to charge in. There's not going to be much supporting fire on account of the fact that, uh, yes, these guys are now going to be in the way, but I need cover so these guys can get up on the wall. So... I'm going to send in one unit here to keep these guys busy. I don't necessarily think they're going to win this fight. I think they're going to lose it. But it's going to stop these guys from climbing up onto the walls to intercept. We just want troops bloody everywhere. And honestly, my troops are going to do pretty well. These guys are going to be defeated. Odd pot shot coming in as well, which is lovely. A few lancers are dodged about. But now we're just pushing from multiple angles at the same time. Also, some of the cavalry apparently came back, which is impressive, to be honest. I mean, well done, lads. I thought you were naffing off for good. Uh, what are we doing here? There's... I mean, if you could go and finish off the cannons, do it. Well done. I mean, honestly, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive right there. So my troops are now just getting up on the walls and... Don't know why you're going in that direction, but honestly, it doesn't really hurt. These guys, you don't need to be in uh, guard mode anymore. That's absolutely A-OK. -okay. We've also taken a building. Yes, we've started capturing the walls here. 
You guys get over here. That is now, yes, the basic citizen militias. They are going to be annihilated by these troops who are in possession of bayonets. Because these guys, you may notice, do not have bayonets. So their sticks are blunt, mine are pointy. Good luck with that, guys. You're going to need it. My troops are still climbing, but in a moment, as soon as they're in position, they can start firing from the walls down to the area below, which is just beautiful. French appear to be, yes, redeploying. They're aware there's a problem on this side and it's not going to be able to hold for too long. If I could push them back beyond this breach, I could get these guys into the armory, which would be delightful. The final calm citizens cannot possibly hold for too long, so here we go. My troops are now on the walls, firing down at the French from their own defences, which is just beautiful. Absolutely bloody beautiful. This is what you want to see. Take the walls, use them to your advantage. Push past them. We need to get these guys sorted out. Wavering. Only three. Yeah. Get to here. You guys are getting here. I want you to take the armory. It's not actually got guns in it, but it is an area you can shoot from. Meanwhile, over here, these units are looking dicey. There we go. I think these guys figured out how to shoot from the walls. Well done. So the cavalry is basically worthless at this point. Honestly, send in some reinforcements. You guys aren't doing much in terms of gunfire. So push forward to keep these guys busy. And you guys, get in here, please, if you can. Because, yeah, these guys are keeping you covered while you just try and kick the door in. And there's only a door this side. A little bit unfortunate, but... Yep, there we go. Hammer that down. In they go. My troops are now storming the armory. In a moment, they'll be able to start shooting out of it, providing overwatch for these guys. So that's another building fallen to me. Yeah, lancers in this environment are useless. They need open fields, a run-up, the ability to disengage, re-engage, reassert that charge bonus. This was not a good army for defending a fort. So my guys just firing down from above. I just love all these buildings and walls and everything. I really like the artillery forms. To be honest, I think it works really well to have this very small tactical strategic fight rather than a ridiculously large city where you spend minutes with your troops just wandering around not knowing where to go next. The fact it's so compact, it works really well for me. I really enjoy these. Okay, looks to me like the right-hand breach is now mine. So I'm going to send these troops with their bayonets to lock down the centre. And you guys are going to lock down another building. I just love the flags, by the way. How there's a really excitable guy at the front who just waves a flag around. He's great. I love this guy. Give him a medal. Okay, overfire is still coming down from the tower onto these guys. This is probably the single strongest unit they have got at this point. And, yep, securing more and more buildings. You guys are now in a position to move forward. Yeah, there's now enough space for you to move forward over to here. So you can start firing at those guys. Uh, these guys are now being fired into the rear. They do not enjoy that. One little bit. You guys are doing a competent job uh, right here. One on one, uh, you will just take these guys out. Do these guys even have uh, bayonets? They do not appear to. No, I think the French never researched bayonets. Or they just haven't turned that mode on. So uh, one on one, we're going to destroy these bastards. Now... Does anyone know how we're going to get up to these guys? Because I can't help but notice they appear to be kind of stuck. Okay, I'm just going to tell these guys to melee the lads up here. And we're going to see how they do it. Because I'm not 100% sure how they're planning to... Oh, they're going to use... They're going to just climb the walls. John, they're going to do the thing they can do to get up on the walls. That's reasonable, yes. Okay, here we go. Last few units have now been completely surrounded, isolated, pikemen holding them in place. Everybody else firing from every angle, above, behind, side to side, above, the other way too. This unit will now be taken care of. Oh, here's fun by the way. So the unit upon the... No, you're not getting away that easily. The unit that was trapped upon the wall has now shattered and thus is now escaping... They are unfortunately climbing straight down into my troops with bayonets. So I don't think this is necessarily going to end that well for them, actually. There we go. That guy's nice and stabbed. 
And that, I believe, is your lot handled uh, pretty well, if I do say so myself. Obviously, we've lost uh, a fair few men. You don't walk into an artillery fort without losing something, but... The French put up the best fight they could, given their cannons and cavalry just didn't do much, meaning their effective force was basically only half of what they actually had. Oh yeah, 500 dead to their 1,228 be flipping beautiful. And, more importantly, Paris belongs to me. Which means you may notice on the map over here, France is now a lovely lovely orange. Now, normally, France would be okay at this point, because they're supposed to have a, a second European territory. But today, they don't. They've made some terrible, terrible decisions. Austria has just swung in, taking their insurance policy away from them, meaning, as a result of that, France is dead. Now, I believe they can come back if there is a rebellion in a territory that's supposed to be French, and that rebellion wins. France can just pop back up again, but this has all sorts of interesting consequences. Because their French colonies do not just die or become rebel as well. Instead, appropriate new nations have just been brought into existence. In particular, say hello to the brand new independent French nation of Quebec, currently set up in New France. And these guys can actually do pretty well. They can expand. I've seen independent Quebec become quite a powerhouse in this game. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. My goodness, look at the map. So much of it has been painted orange. What an amazing job John is doing. And look at Paris with its ridiculous level of wealth. Now you can raise new armies. No, I can't. This is something we need to learn about France right now. France is a trap. Okay, one that I think a lot of players fall into because, and me saying this is going to bring Claire so much joy, France is basically ungovernable. So you may recall, say, just last turn, we took over Flanders, all right? It was Spanish, we moved in, so resistance to foreign occupation represents minus 11 to public order, fading one each turn. Just exempt them from taxes, put a small garrison, no trouble there whatsoever. In France, the figure is minus bloody 30. So even with complete tax exemption, minus 14 to the aristocrats, minus 12 to the lower classes. Despite the fact France has a massive happiness building, even then, it is going to be years before France is going to behave. Even longer before it will happily pay taxes. You see, we absolutely could spend the thousands and thousands it would take to repair up Paris, invest in happiness buildings, maybe in five years, ten turns, we might be able to get them to calm down and pay their taxes. You see, a basic unit of line infantry costs me 276. So Paris could pay for, what, eight units of decent infantry. And you're gonna be needing that much just sitting in Paris to act as a garrison. And that's before we get into the other problems, because as people are well aware, France in this game is a huge province. You take Paris, you've taken all of France, and everything that comes with it. Number one, I just gained a land border with Spain. My hated enemies, who now that they see me as a big, terrifying, expansionist European power, will never bloody stop attacking me. Say they just march in, attack this vineyard, attack this town, attack this port all the way down here. It's going to take me like two turns to march my army down to deal with it. And while my army's down there, what are Parisians going to do? They're going to bloody riot. There are going to be non-stop rebellions because even though I can afford a small army just to sit in Paris to keep the population under control, that army needs to deal with the giant bunch of southern fronts I've just accidentally opened. Number two, I've just gained a port in Marseille into the Mediterranean. And this is a disaster. The port is poor. It's not going to generate that much money anyway. Now, multiple ports, meaning more trade routes is good. But you've got to bear in mind, in this game, trade money doesn't really come from having as many trade routes as possible. It comes from selling trade goods. Now, right now, every single trade good is already being sold. If I just open up more trade routes with more partners, I'm just going to give each of them less goods. I'm not going to make that much more money. 
I'll make a little bit because I'm selling general goods as time goes by, but it's really not going to be a big deal. Meanwhile, some idiot traders working for me are going to try and use this route. And as a result of that, we have got even more trade sailing right past bloody Spain. These guys are going to start raiding that trade immediately next turn. Plus, don't forget the Mediterranean is just filled with bloody pirates right here. There is going to be non-stop piracy and a mostly unguarded port is going to attract attention. The Italian states are right next to it. They build giant fleets because what else are they going to do? They're minor nations that have got access to the sea and nowhere to expand to. And sooner or later, they're going to attack that port. Okay, Savoy is going to attack me. They're going to declare war. It's absolutely inevitable. So I now need to build and maintain a Mediterranean fleet. Oh, and once I'm at war with Savoy and go and take care of them, oh, don't you worry. Genoa is going to be coming in next. Spain is right there. Now all of a sudden, I'm stuck in a North Italian campaign and Venice will be coming in and it will never bloody end. And that's what this game gets right. In many Total War games, people complain because they say, oh, the AI just declared war on me constantly, even though there was no tactical or strategic reason for them to do so. Well, let me introduce you to the 18th century, where that happened pretty much constantly. As I say, you may have heard of this little guy called Napoleon. Happened to him a lot, actually. In short, between babysitting Paris, the threat of Spain attacking, the threat of the Italian states attacking by land and sea, there is no way that Paris is worth holding. It simply is not. Now, my original plan was to sell Paris back to France. Now, that hasn't worked out. Meaning, basically, here's my plan. I need to dispose of France. And there's one candidate I've got in mind. That's right. I'm going to sell France to Britain. That way, they need to deal with Spain. They need to deal with the inevitable wars against the Italian states. They need to protect the Mediterranean. And to be honest, they've got a massive bloody fleet. And this will also help keep the channel completely 100% safe. The question is how much they're going to be willing to pay for it. I suspect not much for the simple reason that, uh, yes, right now, public order is super, super low. Let's see what we can get out of them. Okay, let's start off with me maybe asking for a fair bit here. I will hand over France. I just want a bit of loose change and I'd like to restore our alliance just to make sure me and Britain stay close friends. Now, I doubt he'll accept this, but we'll see. And, okay, he didn't say, we have never been so offended, so we're not a million miles off. You can't see precisely how much we are or aren't in favour, but public opinion is friendly. I think we're okay. Our public opinion towards the British, not so good. They did kind of abandon us and refuse to join us in a war. Okay, they are driving a hard bargain. They will not pay a bloody cent for France, but honestly... They're doing me a favour, disposing of it. You can have it for free, lads, and... There we go. We've done it. We have now got rid of France. France now belongs to Britain. Meaning, that incoming Spanish army, Britain's problem. Italian wars, Britain's problem. The fact that France is currently on fire, Britain's problem. But do you want to do something really bloody funny? The French no longer consider they are being occupied by a foreign military invader. Because they're not being. Alright, I conquered them, so the Dutch are the enemy. The Dutch are no longer in possession of Paris, so the French are now happy. They will be happy, tax-paying citizens in no time whatsoever. And that's just pushed them into being happy enough to restore the alliance to. Okay. Me and Britain, back to being super best friends. So, that's one problem taken care of. Um, don't forget the other problem, which is Sweden, who seem to be floating around nearby to me with a very, very large army that can't reasonably be going anywhere other than at my borders. I want to be allied with Sweden. Okay, that's what I bloody want. And I'm willing to pay for it if it just keeps him busy for the time being and just keeps him away from Norway. How about, mate, I give you some technology and some loose change? There is 100% deal to be done here. I'm sure of it. 
okay, they're willing to pay for my plug bayonet and social contract. They'll give me square formation. Basically, yes, my infantry can form into a square, so they can't effectively be flanked because there are guns and spikes pointing in every direction. And they'll toss in some money too. I'll do it because positive deals being accepted will just slowly get us moving in the right direction. Okay, time to spend some money. Step one, the army needs to be, oh blimey. Right, well the money's gone. Yeah, get rid of the basic provincial cavalry. They are kind of terrible, to be honest. The regiment of horse is much more effective. And replace the militia. In fact, actually don't bother replacing the militia. The militia can just go and chill out in Brussels, just to help out with them, because they're not happy right now, to be honest. So exempt them from taxes, send one unit over here, just to reinforce them, keep a close eye on the Austrian army, by the way. So that means there's going to be, yes, two holes in this army going forward. And we know what that means, that means one more bit of cavalry to replace the weak cavalry, and one more line infantry to replace the militia. Sweden might be about to start doing something stupid. And on top of that, Prussia is at war. They are building a fleet out of... Is that their only ports? It might be, you know. Okay. Destroy the fleet. Burn the ports. I wonder how well guarded... Oh, hang on. I think my allies, Westphalia, just went and took Saxony. Because I know that was held by Prussia at some point. So well done, lads. You're doing well. But yeah, if I could just deny Prussia access to the sea, that would be really good news. And if my army was marching in that direction anyway, then if Sweden does try something, they're ready to deal with it. Speaking of which, I could also drop some spare money into... Yes, some new vessels. Just a basic Indiaman times two down in South America. Because we could trade more. We could be trading more goods than we're currently trading. Sweden's backing off. Possibly they don't want to upset Britain. So, okay. We're not allied with Sweden, but we need to start working towards it. Because me, Sweden, Britain, Northern European Protestant Alliance... It makes sense, damn it. We should be friends. Oh, and hilariously, I've just recruited a new agent. Because, yes, as we've mentioned before, you don't hire agents in this game. They just pop into existence if you've got the correct buildings. Now, admittedly, I'm not 100% sure why a gentleman who's supposed to be generated by schools just popped into existence here in Trinidad and Tobago, but... Okay, we'll just leave him here, and we'll try and find a way to get him, you know, somewhere where there's a school also. Hang on. Looking at the map colour there, has it happened? Yes, I believe Britain has just exerted direct control over the 13 colonies. Which, if you're the player, you have to, like, do with a fancy mission, but the AI just gets to absorb its protectorates kind of for free. Now, is the same true for Spain? No, Spain has not yet absorbed New Spain, but they will do at some point. So, Spain's going to get scary as well. This now means Britain has two land borders between themselves and Spain. One in North America, one in Europe. So, okay, if we're lucky, they'll keep each other busy. Still, we do at least have a, a better army now. Dumb amounts of guns, three cannons, two proper bits of cavalry, one for each flank... And some pikemen, they will be able to help me out here. Now, Hanover, me old friends, I'd rather not have to sail all the way round in my boat to get to Prussia. I'd rather go by land where it's going to be a bit safer and... Uh, okay, I don't think I can force the Prussians to come out and fight me. If they're determined to be in port, all I can do is blockade the port. And speaking of which... These guys have got... These guys have got trade. Okay, hang about here. What's the trade precisely? It may well be locally generated. There might well be uh, fur production. Furs are, yes, not a good trade good. 
They tend to be very cheap because they're produced across uh, Europe to the east. Meanwhile, across North America, they come from all over the shop. So price tends to be very poor. Meanwhile, ah, uh, yes, you can see here, keeping an eye on it, how much of my trade is being stolen right now due to raiding, probably Spanish. Meanwhile, my trade to the Mughal Empire is simply not happening because the Maratha Confederacy is blockading their port. Oh, yep, there it is. It's the Spanish, dear oh flippin' dear. Also, I keep forgetting to do anything with my navy that's just chilling out in India. It needs to go and do something, damn it. Send it to the Americas. I'm not sure which is going to be the fastest way to get there, given I want to get to this side of the Americas. Um, I'm sure it'll work out. Oh, and that reminds me. The port is done in Flanders. So I can't tax Flanders right now, but I just picked up new trade routes. Now, trading, as I was just saying, doesn't necessarily generate that much more money, because I'm just dividing my trade routes between more people. But it does generate a bit of money, and trade is a good way of just starting to normalise diplomatic relationships. So this is crucial. I need to find a way to get trade running with Sweden. Here's a bloody wacky scenario. They would like to trade and be allies, but they want Ceylon... And in return, they'll give me Estonia and Livonia. And also they'll give me the knowledge of how to do a steam pump. I mean... To be honest, that's... How much is Ceylon really making for me right now? I get a different region out of it, though... It's not a good region. It's in a rather difficult position, to be honest. Right next to, yes, Russia, who I'm at war with. Still, it's interesting that he even made that offer. Look, if you guys are looking for an empire to send you trade goods, I have got one Trinidad and Tobago sitting right there. Nobody wants Trinidad and Tobago. It's very sad. No, we just can't get anything out of them, so we need to look elsewhere. Fortunately, there are many other powers that are not so hostile to me who may be willing to trade. Now, if I can, I'd like to keep my trade entirely out of the Mediterranean because it's just asking to get raided. The Mediterranean is pirate central, unfortunately. So here we go. My trade's already going most of the way around the world anyway because most of it comes from the East Indies. Persia, that'd work. And here we go. Some of the technology that I just traded with Sweden, I can now trade straight over to Persia. So I've now got trade going on. We can slowly start building a relationship with the Persians. Love it. We're back. You guys, you magnificent bastards. That's actually going to be a really safe route. Straight through the channel, over the Atlantic. There's just Britain around there these days. So... Yeah, there's basically no one to attack that route. Sure, why not? And as for Prussia, let's just uh, let them know we're here. All right, if they want to do 3000s worth of trade, which is not a bad amount, then I'll be helping myself to a bit of that. Spain is also reinforcing their bloody raiding fleet. I need to go and deal with that at some point. And uh, okay, no, they just came off the trade route. Excellent. Paris still... So on fire. The Catholic priest has now moved into Flanders and... The Prussia situation just became a lot more urgent than I was expecting. That was all they had. They're gone. One of my allies is just straight up dead. Well, we're going to need to go and sort that out, aren't we? And my army is fully recovered. These guys have just stormed a city. They're not going to be able to repair themselves before I arrive, because that's going to take them two full turns. Oh, meanwhile, down by Brazil, that tiny fleet, I think I stole off. Yeah, this is the Russian Indiaman I stole. You guys can head right over here with your three guns and begin trading, because why not a... That's a pirate. I tell you what, how about you just go away from the pirate to the other side of the Atlantic? Hopefully no pirates there. Oh, all my other Indian ships are ready to go too. Right, guys, join up because you're kind of both uh, terrible 
actually. You cannot defend yourselves. These are not flutes. These are basic terrible lads. Screw it. Send them to West Africa as well. No one seems to be there and the ivory is worth a lot. Right, trade routes are clear. Trader income is looking pretty good. Now we have to turn our attention to Prussia. I might be able to justify occupying Hanover permanently. It's in my neighbourhood. There'll be a port there sooner or later. You know what? Kind of feels like a good thing to occupy. But then I've got to deal with borders, with more bloody Prussia on two different frontiers. And uh, you've got to be careful you don't get pulled from war to war to war. Move in, secure favourable borders, get back out. So, we'll see how good I am at achieving that objective next time as we march into Hanover, get some revenge, and see how far I get bogged down in an endless Eastern European conflict. So, plenty of military and political wrangling to come. Hopefully, you join me next time for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Empire Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. Oh my god. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear. And then in come the chariots. Yeah.